morning. The time now is 7.30 on this Thursday, August 22nd. Welcome to Breakfast with Bridget, live streaming on News 6 Plus for your smart TV and ClickOrlando.com. I'm Bridget Ellison. Glad to have you with us on what I call Friday Junior because we're making our way through the week. And today we have a lot to get to. We have some interesting weather stories to talk about with Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos. We will find out more about Furry Friend with Trooper Steve. And we have a live guest from Lighthouse Central Florida to tell us about a very unique immersive charity experience benefiting those who have varying degrees of vision impairment and vision loss. So looking forward to that live interview coming up as well. But first, let's go over to the Pinpoint Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Candace Campos. And Candace, we learned a whole lot this morning about funnels and water spouts and tornadoes and lots of pictures coming in and videos Tons. with what happened yesterday. Yeah, you know what? Why do I get to talk about water spouts, but then Steve gets to talk about dogs and stuff? I know. We all have our says his job. <laughs> Your job is not better. Well, there's a place to be. All right. Yeah, you know what? We did. We had a very popular water spout. And the reason I say popular is because anytime you get a lake water spout, mm -hmm. automatically you get a lot more pictures from viewers because, you know, on the beaches, there's only a certain amount of people who'd like to see it, right? because it's out there over the open waters. But when you have it over a lake, you have a 360 degree view sometimes of it, especially when you have it like a lake as popular as Lake Jessup. So we did have a water spout, which some were wondering, we didn't have a tornado warning. You guys didn't talk about a big severe weather risk. Well, water spouts, although they look very similar to tornadoes, they're more like a cousin uh, or maybe a sibling but they're not the same, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So let me show you real quick uh, what the difference is actually between a water spout versus a tornado. Water spouts don't need severe storms. They don't need as much energy and lift as a typical tornado would. Now, water spouts form much easier than tornadoes, especially because you, it's almost like this little bit of um, the way that the atmosphere is kind of stacked up over a lake or a uh, or an ocean, it kind of differs a little bit. So that allows a quick spin up to happen. Now, even though water spouts tend to be much weaker than any tornadoes, they're still pose a danger to watercrafts and, and swimmers and whatnot. So of course, if you still see a water spout, it's, it's cool to take your photos away from it. Use that zoom in camera and uh, you, you, should be, you should be good to go. All right, let's look at ahead in the forecast. The same weather setup that spawn that water spout that also kept the rain chances in place yesterday will once again be in place today it's all thanks to a cold front that is still just overhead there's an area of low pressure that's nearby and that's going to continue to surge and inject all that moisture and instability into the forecast so widespread rain and storms especially today and tomorrow a little higher than yesterday at about 70 percent the timing will still be between about one at about 10 in the evening um, with that wet pattern continuing at least until the weekend. Rain chances will stay at 70%. So as you can see here, today's setup, you can see all of that moisture coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. We have rain on both coasts, right? We have moisture in the Atlantic, moisture in the Gulf that basically says, hey, we're kind of sandwiched in between all this action. We are going to see a decent chance for rain and storms, especially as that West Coast sea breeze fires up. So as we take you here, hour by hour, clouds and rain forecast showing, again, those scattered storms already start to kind of bubble up. Pretty typical around 12 to 1 o'clock. But the real surge and that widespread chance, of course, happens when, Bridget? Dismissal time. Yes, hello. I mean, look at that. We're talking heavy rain. The purples and the reds and the yellows indicating that moderate to heavy torrential downpours at times. But when we are also talking about the potential for some isolated flooding areas like like uh, Melbourne, Brevard County saw a lot of rain yesterday. So if we add to that, which is certainly a guarantee today, um, just do be aware that it could cause some of that short term nuisance uh, flooding in the forecast along some of our roadways. But five, six o'clock, we will still have rock and thunderstorms. And then by about eight, as the sun goes down, most of the activity should taper off. Models are holding on to some residual rain lingering across our western zones. Then we'll be dry overnight. And then guess what? Friday, the same thing happens at what time, Bridget? In the afternoon. Three o'clock in the afternoon for, for uh, the, the was afternoon dismissal time. So again, the only difference between today and tomorrow's rain chances will be they might be a little further inland on Friday versus uh, more east today. 
really at the end of the day, though, there's still going to be so much moisture. It really won't take much to create some rain and some storms. And then we'll have more of the same come Saturday and Sunday. So your rain chances look like this for today, upwards of about 70 to 80 percent. Now, our severe weather risk is low. But like I mentioned in the beginning, we will have that risk of some water spouts, some flooding, a moderate chance for that. But the highest threat will be the lightning, the heavy rain, the gusty winds. Winds could be picking up up to about 40, 40 to 45, even 50 miles per hour. So here's what your afternoon forecast looks like. We're still good to go. If you want to head to the parks, you want to take that walk outside, you want to run some errands without having to deal with the rain. Now until about one o'clock will be your best bet. After that, though, making sure you have your pinpoint weather app handy. We'll be seeing those notifications as rain and storms will be nearing you and where you are currently at. And then as a result to your full seven day forecast, those rain chances still staying high. We're up to 70% until further notice Bridget mm, all right well, yes we need it we do we do at the end of the day we certainly need the rain we had a little bit of a lull in some of the rain chances that weren't as widespread so some areas are doing a little better than others but uh, you know Steve and I were talking about it. our our grass is a little extra crunchy over yeah. the last couple of uh cu couple of days yeah you know the kids get excited maybe they can break out some of their rain gear so it's funny because Sienna just put on her sister's hand me down rain boots She's like, Mom, if I don't use these, I'm going to grow out of them. And you're like, I'm mm -hmm. like, you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. But today's picture day, so you're not wearing the, the clunky rain boots. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I'll right. be it for another day. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I look forward to the update on all of mm -hmm. that. Okay. Thanks, Candace. Sure. All right. And so uh, Trooper Steve had a nice assignment yesterday meeting a lovely, sweet girl named Sky, And so uh, he's back with us this morning with on, uh, more on how that went. And uh, she, she was so sweet. We had some video on this morning too. Yeah, so she's a six-year-old uh, female dog. She looks a lot like a mini Great Dane almost. Okay. Uh, a, a few folks had reached out and was like, what is she? And I'm like, she's a special dog that just needs a home. Look at this first. Those eyes. Oh, the eyes. I'm telling you, she was so precious, guys. She likes to shake, uh, too, I noticed. Yes, and she's smart. She is, you know, like the affirmations that we uh, tell our kids and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that, that you are smart, you are kind, you are powerful. <laughs> That's what Sky is. And we had such a great time. Oh, man, I wish we would add some of the video from yesterday uh, oh. because the interaction that the two of us had was crazy. And I was just like sit and she sat down and I was like all right do you want to try something new I said sit and roll and she just rolled over uh, so quickly but her story is kind of sad because she was with her owner for six years as a puppy and then obviously now a six-year-old dog and the owner just surrendered her one day over at animal services because mm. he was moving and that was it now mm. I, I don't understand everyone's situation so I'm not gonna uh, judge anybody but at the same time there's always other options make sure you look at your rescues try to rehome your dog before mm -hmm. you just drop them off at a shelter mm -hmm. you know Orange County Animal Services is there because there is a need within our community to take care of our animals yeah. uh, they wish they didn't have to have an organization like that they have over 200 dogs over 20 or 30 different cats there and they're always looking for a home so sky uh does have some if you looked at her skin some skin irritation but mm -hmm. she doesn't even acknowledge it which tells them she is perfectly fine so her first vet visit is covered by web engineering so if you whatever vet if you happen to adopt her whatever vet that you go to, they will take care nice. of getting her all fixed up, all the medicine nice. that she needs for her skin. And uh, I've already paid for the uh, $10 adoption fee. So if someone wants to go there and just meet Sky and bring her home, please, please, please go do that. Right. Uh, I have a friend that is going today and another friend that's going mm -hmm. tomorrow to try to go see her. So and we'll see what happens. To go, she's ready to go home. Like she's, she's, she's a home girl. She's trained. And yeah, like her behavior. She's be great for anybody. So. Yeah, because I even asked, I go, is she like athletic, wants to run around? And uh, Bryant Almeida, the amazing PIO over there, he's like, well, she kind of just wants to hang out. And I was like, I like that kind of dog. So uh, she's a homebody and just wants that human love. So yeah. hopefully you guys can go check that out. And then today, 10 a.m., I'll be out in Claremont. And I'm gonna have Chief Broadway with the Claremont Police Department there. He's the first African-American police chief uh, that has ever served over at the Claremont Police Department. So I wanna talk to him. And he's also highly involved with so many charities 
throughout Central Florida, whether it's Special Olympics, whether it's the Concerns of Police Survivors Organization. And they, ever since he's been there, the Claremont Police Department has really taken an advance in technology. So well, he's going to join me today at 10 a.m. in Results One for an awesome conversation. And him and I have spoke before, but we've yeah. never met in person. So I'm really excited to have that uh, have him in the truck with me. Well, that's good. And you had a little bit of uh, craziness happen right before the end of the show this morning. So what's the latest with the roads? Uh, latest on that. We'll take you to the traffic map. Some good news. Uh, that intersection has been cleared. So that eastbound delay at Cimarron uh, Boulevard 436 at Bear Lake has been reopened. There is a small eastbound delay. So it was a Seminole County Patrol vehicle that got struck overturned and the deputy was transported. The deputy is totally okay. They were sent for precautionary reasons. You know, you get into a crash, all that equipment goes flying all over the place. Uh, the vest and stuff can cause some uh, issues. So they just wanted to make sure the deputy was gonna be okay and they are gonna be fine. So is the other driver, they were, were not transported. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of that, our morning commute is about average on a Thursday. Those westbound delays, pretty serious over in Lake Mary area. And then of course, further east out in Deltona, we're slowing down this morning out there. I don't know why mm. this keeps happening. It's almost getting me to think I need to go out and see what uh -huh. is taking place out there to cause that in the morning. Mm -hmm. 192, Kissimmee, we are uh, routinely up to speed. Pleasant Hill, you are backed up. But outside of that, 417 looking beautiful this morning. Uh, that was the only major crash that we had that really could slow us down. I can just only hope that the rest of the morning kind of goes smooth. All right. Sounds good. So we'll see you in Claremont a little bit later this morning. Yes, ma'am. I'll see you later. All right. Thanks, Trooper Steve. So we want to get to a few headlines, and then we'll be talking to Lighthouse Central Florida about a great event coming up next month. But first, some new developments in the Madeline Soto murder case. Um, we are getting newly released evidence, including some interviews from investigators, and this dates back to, of course, the investigation into her disappearance uh, in February, and then eventually, unfortunately, the discovery of her body. So News 6's Mark Lehman has more about this new evidence, including 911 calls. In newly released evidence, we're learning more about how the investigation unfolded into the disappearance of 13 year old Madeline Soto on February 26th. And do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, police, possibly. I'm reporting a missing child. At 4 43 p.m., an unidentified acquaintance called 911 on behalf of Soto's mother. She then called back about a half hour later. She's been missing since 8 a.m., so we want to get everything done as soon as possible to try to find her. I, I understand. More than two hours after that, at 7.21 p.m., a different acquaintance called 911. We, we have a missing child since this morning. We already called three times, and the police didn't show up yet. Deputies responded nearly three hours after the first call and began questioning Soto's mother and the mother's boyfriend, Stefan Stearns. He claimed to have dropped Soto off on the way to school that morning, which the mother spoke about with deputies. I also messaged her teacher, and he looked at her entire attendance today and saw that she was completely not at school today either. Okay. Um, so she never made it. Detectives later learned Soto was already dead before she was first reported missing. Stearns would later be arrested and charged with the teen's murder. And so we'll be following all the latest developments in that release. Also, want to tell you about a great way you can support back to school, a gift for teaching. We have a phone bank coming up later today here at News 6, and you can really help get results for students in need and, and teachers who are trying to help those students this school year. News 6's Eddie Castro explains more details. Every dollar today that's uh, donated will actually be able to provide up to $20 worth of school supplies um, because of generous funders who have um, committed to matching donations today. Angela Garcia is the Vice President of Development and Marketing and says this will give the community a chance to donate with just a simple phone call. Last year, we raised more than $61,000 to help teachers and students. More than 70% of um, schools here in Central Florida are considered high need. And so you think about the hundreds of thousands of students that that impacts. Earlier this summer, with the help of volunteers, 21,000 backpacks were stuffed with school supplies and were later delivered to more than 140 schools in Orange and Osceola counties. But despite that big project, the work isn't over because teachers and students are in need all year around. So our goal is to raise $30,000, which would allow us to provide 
$600,000 worth of school supplies, which is pretty amazing. So that's how you get bang for your buck and really help make a difference with these kids and making sure they're ready for school and can be successful and have everything they need to be feel prepared. So the volunteers uh, will be standing by the phones and they'll be there until seven o'clock. So that's noon until seven. And you can also go to clickorlando.com slash gift for teaching. And so just follow along with us this afternoon and you know, call in and, and every little bit helps. So we hope you can get involved. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with Lighthouse Central Florida to talk about a special breakfast benefit that is coming up in September. Welcome back here on Breakfast with Bridget, live streaming on News 6 Plus and ClickOrlando.com. We're happy to have a special guest with us this morning to talk about a benefit experience coming up next month. Lighthouse Central Florida is raising money to provide vision screenings and rehab services for people in Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties with varying degrees of vision, loss, and impairment. With me this morning, Kyle Johnson, the CEO of Lighthouse Central Florida. Good morning, Kyle. Good morning, Bridget. Thanks for having me. I'm excited because this is a this is a breakfast experience that you all are putting on next month. Tell us more about Lighthouse Central Florida and, and what you're up to. Sure, sure. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, so uh, since 1976, if uh, anyone in Orange, Osceola, and Seminole County was has been born blind or visually impaired to become so at any age, Lighthouse Central Florida is the only provider of vision specific rehabilitation, training, education, and also, as you can imagine, adjustment to blindness. So that's, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of folks who their lives are dramatically changed. Oftentimes uh, they think their life is over uh, or parents of a child who's born blind. They, they, they think that a lot of times they think uh, that the kid's life is never going to get going. And so that is just patently false. The, the most common sound in our building is laughter. And um, we see transformational change every day. Um, and we love, we love doing it. And we're the only shop in town doing it. So it's uh, pretty important that we continue on. How do people find you? How do, how do you end up connecting with people in need? You know, some folks will find us via our website, LighthouseCFL. Dot org. That's lighthousecfl.org. There's a big button on the homepage that says request help. Um, other people are, um, oh, there's Addison. Um, other people are referred by their uh, physician or, you know, a lot of times, honestly, um, we've had people say, well, no one told me about Lighthouse, but my bus driver did or my sister found you. So it comes in all, all sorts of ways. And uh, it really is the difference between um, living a life of sort of, I can't, I'm blind, you have to help me, uh, versus that seed of I can being either grown or restored in that person and them being able to pursue. They may have to approach life differently, but there are countless examples of people who uh, are blind, who are thriving. And, and, you know, our mission is charting a course for living, learning, and earning with vision loss. What that isn't is getting by with vision loss or surviving with vision loss. It's about thriving with vision loss. Mm -hmm. And so I see various activities happening there and this uh, fundraiser event, this, this benefit that you're having, raising our sights, this is a very unique thing. This is more than just raising money. This is, this is meant to be an experience for people to understand who they're helping and, and what goes into a lot of what you're about at yes. Lighthouse. It, it sure is. It's uh, going to be the first of its kind, actually, for us, where, you know, we've done breakfast fundraisers in the past. There's no cost to attend September 13th at 8.30 a.m. at the Orlando Sheridan North, right off of I-4. Easy to get to, plenty of parking. Um, but it, it, will, it, it will be an immersive experiential um, uh, morning for us, for all of our guests, where you really get to experience some of the things that our, that our uh, friends and colleagues who are blind experience every day. And it's just a sample, um, but it, it's going to be incredibly inspiring. Um, our feature uh, this year will be Sophia McCall. She is a colleague of mine who uh, started at Lighthouse Central Florida and now works at Lighthouse Works, our social enterprise company. She's our lead recruiter on the HR team. Um, and her story is just nothing short of inspiring. 
where you see the strength of uh, determination, perseverance, you know, single mother of four went blind and now she's not anywhere close to the top of her ladder, but we have a, a beautiful video produced uh, detailing her journey and she'll also be there too to, to address the guests and welcome everyone. And so there's a wide range of people that Lighthouse is able to serve and help. What are some of those success stories like hers that you've seen over the years? Oh gosh, um, just you know, they're countless. I, I, was, I was in the private, what's that? I say I know it's hard to just pick one, but you know, just tell us, tell, tell yeah. us a, a little bit about some of well, the maybe younger folks to, like you said, a, a mother or someone who's a little bit older and their experience with vision loss. Certainly. So those services can be a huge, huge critical factor in um, someone who's uh, in their senior ages, um, remaining in their home, living independently, continuing to uh, be connected to their community and um, and participating in things they love doing, you know, whether it's bridge or art or whatever. Um, and then you have uh, stories like Addison here in the blue blouse who is in high school now, but she was in our early intervention program as a baby, um, went through our school age program. Now she's in the teen program called Transition. Last I heard, Addison wants to be a cardiologist. So mm -hmm. her, she's aiming really high. Um, so, you know, it goes on and on and on. You see families that thought life was over and, and little did they know uh, what is possible. When you, you know, for 47 years, we've been applying process technology and training to equal the playing field for people who are blind. And, and these are living, breathing examples of it. And uh, we'll have a lot of folks there uh, from our world uh, as guests at the breakfast as well, being able to sit with all of our other friends and uh, kind of share a little bit about their story. And there'll be neat, interesting devices that are used uh, by people every day who are blind, uh, it's a, it's going to be a it's going to be a love fun packed uh, breakfast event, and we can't wait. October thirteenth. October thirteenth or September thirteenth. Se September thirteenth. September thirteenth. Good, good thing you're here, Bridget. Yes, <laughs> September thirteenth, <laughs> and that's at the Sheridan Orlando North. That's in Maitland, Florida. And like you said, it is free, but there are sponsorship packages if maybe you and your company or your team want to come out together and experience this. And so, uh, what are some other ways to get involved if maybe we can't make it out on September thirteenth? Uh, well, I tell you, we we have tours called the Blink Experience, which is just a one hour experiential tour of of our mission where people come in and, and we'll take them through a series of stops and uh, it is experiential and immersive as well uh, we have dining in the dark that'll be coming up in february again with our great partners from the orlando police department swat team uh, they are your uh your food servers because the room is pitch black and we need mm -hmm. them in their uh night, night vision, vision goggles yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's a mm -hmm. blast, um, you know, so there are always events. We're on every social media channel. Um, we encourage you to take a look at us online, lighthousecfl.org um, and connect with us. We'd love to, to host you for a tour and certainly we'd love to see you September 13th at 830 at the Orlando uh, Sheraton North. All right. Well, we are looking forward to that. And Kyle, thanks for being with us and sharing more about Lighthouse Central Florida. And we'll be sure to pass along uh, all the information online as well. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, Bridget. Appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great morning. You too. Thanks. Thanks. So we do have to get out of here shortly, but we want to tell you about the Disney on Ice Insider Contest that is going on right now on clickorlando.com slash insider. It's always free to be an insider, always free to enter to win those contests. So giving away those tickets, also some tickets to the Kennedy Space Center uh, visitor experience. They have a special night coming up, so we're giving out tickets to that as well. And we want to remind you that we're getting ready to hit the road again with our newscasts. And so we're going to Melbourne and we want to hear about the stories out there. And so we need your help. Go to clickorlando.com slash hits the road. Tell us about things that need attention. Tell us about 
people and places and things that deserve a shout out. We want to hear from you. And again, that's clickorlando.com slash hits the road. That's going to do it for this edition of Breakfast. And I'll see you for lunch at noon on WKFG News 6 at noon. And tomorrow back here for a finally Friday edition of Breakfast with Bridget. Have a great day.